channel. My name is Paige. If you've never seen my face before, please consider subscribing before you leave. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to give it a big thumbs up. We are doing a very, very, very highly requested video and it is all about my breastfeeding journey and the tips and tricks that I have to share with y'all. If you cannot tell, I do have on my Solly baby wrap just in case. I have to go grab baby girl out of her swing. She is in her second leap, started yesterday, and today she is just a little on the clingy side. So she did fall asleep in her swing and I'm gonna let her sleep as long as she will in that swing, which normally isn't very long. So we got to get the show on the road. But in case she wakes up, we're just gonna put her in this wrap and we're gonna keep it moving. First and foremost, I am not an expert. I am not a lactation consultant. I am not a doctor or nurse or any kind of health care professional whatsoever but I feel like there were so many things that I went through with my breastfeeding journey and I'm still going through it should be two months tomorrow and I could just cry just thinking about it but there were a lot of things that I just wasn't aware of even with my research that I done before I even went into labor because this was something that I knew I wanted to do for my baby I knew that it was going to be hard and I don't think I really knew exactly how hard it was going to be. Um, but I want to be your backbone. I want to be your support that you need because sometimes it will be so difficult to the point that you are ready to quit in any moment's time and your loved ones may be like, okay, yeah, go ahead. Or maybe you come from a family that's never breastfed before and doesn't understand. So they're not going to give you the support that you need. I want to be that support for you because it is super important because just when you feel like you want to quit that's when everything gets better so you just have to keep on keeping on but also understand that if you are not physically able or you just don't want to breastfeed then that is fine as long as your baby is fed that is totally okay I could care less as long as that baby is getting the nourishment that it needs so breastfed formula fed as long as it's fed that's all that matters so we're just gonna make that disclaimer but jumping on in i wanted to share some things that worked and didn't work for me things that i had no idea that i needed or even was a thing um so let's go ahead and jump on into it thankfully one problem that we did not have i guess immediately on in the hospital was latching on she immediately knew what a nipple was and she was ready to go but our problem was she wasn't getting on it good enough like she didn't have enough of it in her mouth and when a baby's so tiny like that you're a little intimidated especially when it's your first of how I guess handling like how much handling you can do because when those lactation nurses come in they are like like flipping <laughs> and I'm just like oh my gosh like I know you're not gonna hurt her but still like I couldn't they wanted me to get my my boob where it needed to be and then sort of roll her onto it and that was the most difficult thing in the world because I'm really really coordinated like I'm I'm very coordinated but when it came to that like I just couldn't seem to get it down and when I got it down on one side I couldn't seem to get it down on the other side and I was wondering if it was because I was right-handed or what was going on I would highly highly recommend before you quit before you give up to get on Facebook and look for a breastfeeding group in your area it is extremely helpful because around that two-week mark y'all I was in pain I was in so much pain to the point that my left side, it looked as if it was going to fall off. Um, it was so painful to the point that when she would go to latch on, I was in complete tears. Like I would literally hold my breath. I would take a big breath every time she would go to latch on. It was so painful and I don't think I was prepared for the level of pain that come along with the beginning of breastfeeding. You have to think about the fact that this is, these are things that are not used to being wet and they're wet now all the time. If you're not feeding your baby, they might be leaking and then you have that abrasiveness rubbing against your bra and it's just... It's something that I wasn't completely prepared for because I heard, yeah, get nipple cream. You need a nursing bra, get you a cover. But they didn't really say <laughs> how bad your nipples were going to hurt. Like it was, it was excruciating pain to the point that when I did finally find that breastfeeding class and the, on the first day that I went, and we have to, everyone in the class gets to introduce themselves and their baby. I was in tears introducing us because then you have to tell pretty much, you know, if you have 
a success story to share or if you have something you need advice on and obviously I needed advice because I was hurting so bad and I was trying everything I had bought so many different things on Amazon and here are some of the things that I purchased because they hurt so bad to rub up against my bra I felt like I needed a barrier and breast pads were just not yet because also it was abrasive too and it was constantly it was something that was rubbing up against it and nothing felt good I felt like I needed something to be a barrier in between and these did help for a short amount of time um, these are the soft shells by Medela and the reason that I stopped using these was well one they weren't as tender and they didn't hurt as much but because they left I guess because there was always moisture because they do come with these little um, things that you can place in the bottom of the shell to collect any leakage it would kind of make me a little sweaty and the moisture was kind of just sitting inside of this thing if you're getting where I'm going it had almost like a a vinegary smell when you would go to take these off and I could not stand that I just couldn't I said I'll take the the little bit of the little bit of irritation instead of this nasty smell they did give me that little bit of relief that I needed so that my breast wasn't constantly rubbing up against the inside of my nursing bras nursing bras are something that you definitely need nursing tanks any kind of top because literally all you were going to be doing for that first three weeks is just feeding you just feed and the only thing that you need to wear are things that are easy the only things that you are going to need to wear are things that are easily accessible to the girls so if you're trying to wear something cute that you cannot easily get up in there to them to nurse your baby you probably don't need to wear it be right back these hydro gels was something else that I used I actually got these while I was in the hospital make sure before you leave the hospital that you're asking your nurses for some things to take home with you I had no idea that they had stuff like this for my breast so I was like yes please give me some of those these did help somewhat the only thing that I didn't like about these is before you get ready to nurse you have to clean off everything before then and a lot of times I just wasn't it wasn't accessible for me to get to somewhere and clean it off before for that reason these I just stopped using them obviously I have two packs of them that I never used um, but they kind of did give me some relief but it was just aggravating to have to wash them off every time I took these off before I got ready to feed. If you are a leaky sister, then obviously breast pads are going to be your jam. Now, they do have reusable ones that you can wash. I just preferred just the throwaway, <laughs> throwaway kind. Um, I no longer really need these, but in the beginning, because you don't really know when to expect your milk to come in, I found that these were helpful because it kind of gave me that peace of mind that if things got crazy, <laughs> I had a little bit of backup if we were out and about and I sure didn't want to leak through my shirt. So definitely would recommend having these. Now I talked about nipple cream and my absolute favorite out of the ones that I first tried would be the Earth Mama Organic Nipple Butter. Now I love this stuff because you can use it for multiple things, not just on your breast assist. So you can use it on your lips, your cuticles, um, anything dry. It's just a really good moisturizing organic balm that you can use pretty much all over. So I really, really love this, but mine had gotten so bad to the point that there was no return. It doesn't, didn't matter how many times I used this. I was even using organic coconut oil because that was also something that was highly recommended that I used because it was antimicrobial, I think is what the word is and um, you didn't have to wash that off before feeding that was one big thing that I was really worried about was getting a nipple cream or butter or balm or whatever that I would have to remove every single time that I would feed because that just like I said wasn't feasible at all times I actually ended up having to call in a prescription this was something that they made locally to me I call your doctor see if this is something that they make near you it is called APNO and it is all-purpose nipple ointment and that saved me you could only put it on until it was healed I don't know exactly what's in it but it worked it fixed it I really thought the left one was gonna fall off I'm not even joking it cuz literally it was hanging like this it was pretty bad um and every time my husband would see it he was just like I don't think it's supposed to look like that it gotten so bad they were bleeding so bad Mila was spitting up blood and it really made us really really nervous um, but her pediatrician was like are your breasts bleeding I'm pretty sure that's what it is I doubt it's from her so we were we were calmed down pretty quickly but that is a scary thing but that APNO 
saved me. So I would definitely call your doctor, um, see if they know what it is. They have to make it. There were only two um, pharmacies near us that actually made it. So you have to call it in, they make it that day and you go and pick it up. It was around 50 bucks, which is I think pretty hefty for some nipple butter, but it was so worth it. I would buy it time after time because it helped me incredibly once I got to that point of no return. But there are two different, I guess, worlds of breastfeeding. We all mesh into one, but there are the exclusively only breastfeeding, nursing people, and then there are the pumping breast milk people. I have lived in both worlds, but I predominantly reside in the nursing side. <laughs> Started pumping more often when I realized that my supply had dropped because my period had came back. Now, something else that I was not prepared for was my period to come back so early. I was under the impression that with nursing, you did not get your period back until you were done nursing and at six weeks it came back didn't matter that i was exclusively breastfeeding it was back with a vengeance it was ready to partay so here we are and something that i was not prepared for was my supply dropping while i was on my period and not only that but after doing even more research and digging even deeper into it the milk could taste different maybe the baby wouldn't like it at the time and all of that just totally freaked me out to the point that I wanted to make sure that I did not lose my supply and one thing that I did learn from all the research that I've done if you're trying to get your supply up you have to make sure that your body understands that the amount of milk that it is making is not enough and a lot of times your baby will do that and that's what cluster feeding is is when they need more it will pretty much be a signal to your body like okay it's almost like you're replicating cluster feeding when you're pumping after feeding so the way that i was taught to get your milk supply up is after you nurse to pump even if you're not seeing anything from when you're pumping it's just going to signal your body that hey we need more milk they're empty we need more it would fill them more quickly um so i would wait till about an hour after i had fed her and then i would pump or if for any reason if three hours came up and I wasn't with her or I wasn't able to feed her, I would make sure that I was pumping then. Regardless if she was eating or not, I needed to make sure that my body knows that okay, we are going to empty this out because we need to refill it again. I didn't want my body to get confused thinking, oh wait, she didn't eat right now, so maybe we should slow down on the milk supply. So I make sure that I don't miss a feeding even if she is not nursing from me. I'm away from her for the day. If I got some kind of appointment and I'm not able to be with her, that is when I pump. But for the most part, we are exclusively nursing. And for those of you that do exclusively nurse, but you want to kind of get a little side stash going so that if you want to go on a date, if you want to have a girl's night, a girl's weekend or whatever, if you need a babysitter, you need some milk for your baby. And here's where my magical, wonderful thing comes in handy, the Hakka. If you have not seen my 24 hours with a newborn video, I will link it because it is incredibly important part of our daily routine. This portion of the video is being sponsored by Hakka, but guys, I have talked about them on numerous occasions, not only here on YouTube, but on my Instagram as well. This is a hidden gem. If you don't know anything about a Hakka, you need one. You desperately need one. If you are nursing, this is going to be your best friend <laughs> because this helps you get a little side stash going without pumping, without any extra work. If you've pumped before, you know it is time consuming and it's extra. If you're already nursing, that's an extra step that you don't want to have to take because nursing by itself is a job. And then when you pump, that's a job. So why give yourself two jobs if you don't have to? That's where the haka comes into play because while you're nursing on one side, you can be getting milk collecting in the haka on the opposite side because all it's going to do is collect your letdown. It is not painful. It is not time consuming. You don't really feel it. I mean, it's literally, you're already nursing. Why not go ahead and stick it on there? The suction's really good if you put it on correctly. The suction is really good, so if you got a kicker or your, your child's hands is like reaching all over the place, I haven't had a problem with her kicking it off or knocking it off because I put it on correctly. And the correct way to put this on is you have to flip this over the flange at the top. You can't just stick it on and try to, no, you have to flip this over. So for the demonstration, I totally just went and stole an ornament off the tree. <laughs> 
<laughs> just so I can show y'all. Okay, so this is how it's gonna work. We'll put it to this side because, <laughs> okay. So you flip this part over. Now, I would highly recommend attaching this before you attach your baby. So as soon as you start nursing on that side, your letdown begins and you already got it there ready to collect. So you flip it over and you're going to squeeze the bottom of it. Now, with your other hand, you're going to get your breast the way that you need it, where, whatever direction you need it to go in. Then you're just going to put it over and before you release the bottom, you're going to flip the top over and then release. And there you go. And you will be able to put that milk aside in a bag or a bottle for whatever you wanna do. My method of collecting milk with the Hakka is I have a bottle that I keep in the fridge throughout the day and I continue to add uh, any Hakka milk into that bottle until it reaches the amount of ounces that I want to put away in a bag in the freezer. So I do have two different bottles going sometimes because one I'm working on a freezer bag and the other I'm working on her nightly bottle. She does get a two ounce bottle and we talked about this more in that 24 hour with a newborn video. So you can go over to that and see why we give her that bottle and blah 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 what it has to do with her night routine but highly recommend these I do have two of them if for some reason at night while we're in the bed if she were to just keep on sleeping and miss a couple feedings and I am like really engorged and needing to drain the veins um, these are your I'm telling you, your best friends, you just hook these suckers on and let them drain. And I also will keep a bottle on my nightstand with a lid so that I can pour these in. Some of the Hakas will come with a lid. It depends on which one you order. I will have some links down below for them. You can get it separately if there's a certain Hakka that you want. There are a couple different ones that they offer. My personal favorite is the one that has the little suction cup on the bottom so that you don't accidentally tip this over. It is very easy to tip over. It's made out of silicone. I mean, it's just really easy to accidentally tip over. So the fact that this now has a little suction cup on the bottom, you can just stick it down to a table, put the lid on it, it is secure. It is not gonna get knocked over. Even in a fridge, if things are getting moved around and for some reason it gets tipped over, that lid could pop off. So this is like a double whammy. <laughs> Make sure that you do not lose your milk because y'all know this is liquid gold and this stuff is hard to come by. So I would hate for you to lose any of it. So I would recommend the one with the suction cup. This is just really a game changer. If you don't have one, they're incredibly affordable. Like I said, I will link them down below. Thank you so much Hakka for sponsoring this part of today's video. I was already a fan before, um, so I really don't have anything else to say about them. Now I want to talk about a few different pumping things. Now obviously I've already talked about the Hawka silicone pump. Now that's technically not like a pump pump because you're not physically pumping it. It is applying constant pressure. I guess you would call it pressure. Like I said, it doesn't hurt. It's not like a hurting kind of pressure. But it's a constant pull. So it's constantly drawing out milk while you have it on. Whereas a pump, you are releasing and pumping, releasing and pumping if you get if you catch my drift in that category I have three different pumps so I think I'm the perfect person to recommend pumps to you because <laughs> I've tried them all because I got so scared about my dropping my supply I was trying to make sure that I was covered at all time surprise I'm doing a giveaway. So if you're interested in winning your very own game-changing Hakka to just boost your breastfeeding game to the 1000th percent, look down below in the description box. I will have information on how you can win your own with the suction base and the lid because like I said, that is crucial to you not losing any of that liquid gold. So if you're interested, make sure to check down below in the description box. Read very closely so that you are able to enter to win one of your very own Hakkas. If you don't know how to do the whole insurance thing, it is Aeroflow breast pumps. Just Google that and you can just put your insurance information in and it'll tell you what you qualify for. That was the easiest thing for me to do and they sent it right over to me and it even came with a really cute bag that we've used for things other than just the breast pump parts. Um, but I do highly recommend that. One thing that I think is crucial and that you need unless you want to kill your back and neck is a pumping bra it is just as important as a nursing bra is if not more important because it's going to hold those pumps in place so that you can be hands-free it is very important especially if you are doing a power pumping session which I was doing around the time of my period to make sure that I was signaling my body that I needed more and, and I would do one power pump session a day and I was doing these at around 11 12 o'clock at night 
and oh boy it is ridiculous but it works um, you do 20 minutes pumping 10 minutes rest 10 minutes pumping 10 minutes rest 10 minutes pumping and that's an hour so you just sit there and it would totally totally suck if you had to hold those pumps in place the entire time that's when that pumping bra really really comes in handy something else to help you get your milk good and flowing are some little packs now I bought these for the ice pack purpose because I was just in so much pain in the beginning and the ice really did and the cooling effect of these really did help but you can heat these up as well in the microwave and the warmth can get your milk Flowing. I have seen people say that they get more milk in a pumping session when they use something that's heated. You can obviously use like a heated wash rag or something. Just put it on your chest. Um, but I did buy these because they do have the hole there so that you can use these while you're pumping. These are made for that reason. So you can just heat them up and put them on and just go to town. And like I said, there's been research done that people say that you get more milk when you do that. Um, but if you don't want to get these, you can just heat up some little towels or something that you have and use those. But I want you all to know that are watching this that no matter what method you've gone about to feed your baby, as long as your baby's being fed, I am super proud of you. This is definitely a hard, hard journey no matter what the outcome was for you. We are still trucking over here with the breastfeeding. My goal is to at least breastfeed until she starts popping teeth out of them gums. <laughs> I just don't know if I'm going to be able to take her biting me. My overall goal would be to reach one years old, but if sis bites me, I'm probably going to have to cut her off. <laughs> so, if you have any tips as far as when babies start getting teeth and breastfeeding, comment those down below. But I think, yeah, I think I might just peace out when she starts doing that. I hope this was helpful for you. Make sure to check the links down below. Once again, thank you Haka for sponsoring that part of today's video. I am a huge, huge fan. I know a lot of you are of the Haka. It is a total game changer. Completely game changer. If you don't have one, you need one. It needs to be on everybody's baby registries, on your Christmas lists, whatever the case may be. But I hope y'all enjoyed this. If you did, please make sure to give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment down below if you have any questions about breastfeeding or anything postpartum whatever it may be leave those down below in the comment area i will see y'all on the next one hope you have a beautiful and blessed day y'all bye